The Kopi Concepts Diva is a 64 mil flat burr, single dose coffee grinder running from espresso to filter. Hi, I'm Peter from Coffee Parts, and not too long ago, if you're putting together a home or coffee grinder setup, it was always the same few grinders that were front of mind. But lately, a lot has changed. So many grinders have come onto the market and they really are lifting the game. Not only from a grind perspective, looking at single dose grinders, different burr materials, geometry, and really what it can produce in terms of particle size distribution, but they really are lifting the game when it comes to design, timeless design, beautiful builds. And it's really becoming quite fascinating to see this area of coffee really develop. So for me, I love timeless design, I love beautiful products, and I'm almost biased that when something looks beautiful and functions well, I feel like almost the coffee tastes better, even though maybe in blind testing it wouldn't, but it is a bit of a visual thing for me. So when Kopi Concepts reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to look into their grinder, and I started reading into the backstory, I was hooked. I really wanted to play with this grinder and see what it was all about. So here it is. So this grinder right here is kind of special. It's one of only three currently in existence. The Kickstarter campaign was funded in July 2021 and the production is happening right now. And this unit here belongs to Brandon's sister. Now Brandon was the founder of Kopi Concepts and he's an Australian living abroad in London. But his sister happens to live down the road from our warehouse where this studio is right now. So when Brandon reached out to us and we started talking about the grinder, I really fell for the brand story. I really liked the journey, what they were building. And when I found out his sister lived down the road and we could borrow this grinder, of course I said yes and here the grinder is right now. So this video might sound biased. I have bought into the Kool-Aid somewhat. I'm excited about this grinder. I love beautiful design and beautiful products. Yet like always, it's based on my thoughts and the way I see and feel for products. So this grinder really is coming into a crowded segment. 64 mil flat burrs, interchangeable with aftermarket burrs like the SSP. Single dose grinder going from espresso to filter, really easy to dial in and using variable speed control, 200 to 1200. Now, none of this is super unique. You've got that in the Time More Sculptor, you've got it in the Option O P64. The build quality is beautiful, but so are those two. What really makes this grinder unique is that it's battery operated. Now, it doesn't sound like much at first, when you start looking at it from a cable management perspective at home, you can really start having beautiful timeless design without worrying about that cable. Whether it's going across the back and plugging into the wall or through the counter, there's always a bit that you can see and it's always a bit too tidy. You can literally move this grinder around and it's gonna be beautiful no matter where it is. But where it really makes a huge difference is just say you're a coffee roaster visiting cafes whether they're your current clients or your prospecting. Now you can put this grinder into a Pelican case, rock up, pull it out, put it on the counter, and really quickly start pulling shots of your coffee at that venue and really showing what it's like. No longer are you trying to use the venue's grinder, which interrupts workflow at the venue, plus people get upset that you're playing around with their grind adjustment. I know it's minor, but it really does upset some people. And you're not turning up with a grinder that's heavy and you have to plug in, find an extension cable, there's cables everywhere. It really is a seamless turn up, put on the counter, grind coffee, and you can really showcase your coffees. Makes it super easy to go on the road show. And that I know of, there's no other grinder that can do this level of coffee in a portable fashion like this, so that makes it super unique. Another cool feature is when the coffee comes out, the way it's distributing. In a way, it reminds me of my EG1 over there that inside the dosing funnel here, there's a paddle that goes around and it really does help distribute. So when you're seeing the coffee come through, you're really seeing the coffee come in a circular pattern and it's making it for a very even distribution. In this case, directly into the dosing cup, but you can remove this feature and grind into the porter filter with the optional porter filter support. Although these days, I feel like the workflow of going into a dosing cup, putting your porter filter across and transferring really is a better workflow, but the option 
is there. The only drawback so far that I found from a design perspective on this grinder is the way you load in the coffee. It is a kind of a tight entry here. You do have this funnel and you load in the coffee, but you do have to think about it. It's a little bit more work than just dropping into, say, a short hopper. Even though I've just mentioned a negative being the really tight funnel here, when it comes to design, this grinder really is beautifully designed and put together. After having this grinder here, and chatting to Claire, which is Brandon, the founder's sister, and really starting to understand the story of how this grinder came about, things really started making sense to me. Brandon being an Aussie, really loves the coffee scene. In Australia, the coffee scene is huge. Then being part of the Formula 2 Red Bull race car team, traveling around Europe and being based in London, the engineering side and the simplification yet really well built product started to come to life. I love race cars, so I really understand that in a race car, things matter to one tenth of a second. It wins or loses a race. And when cars come into pit lane, things have to be able to be changed really quickly. And to be fair, they really can't be failing. So when you start looking at this design and how simple things are and how easy it is to get into the grinder and pull things apart, I really can see elements of race car engineering. And then understanding the story behind it really is beautiful. Finding a machine that they couldn't find through COVID and really wanting to build their dream grinder with that engineering background, that love for coffee. So effectively this grinder was born out of the Australian coffee scene, developed through the race car scene around the world and now is hand built in London. Really is a beautiful story. And I really start to notice little details when I physically have the grinder here that makes sense. I think a lot of times on video or in photo, you can't notice. And I've been spoiled for choice. I really get to see most grinders and I get to play with most coffee equipment. And some just make you feel a little bit better than others. Doesn't necessarily translate to a better coffee on a blind cupping, but there's a way things make you feel that's hard to describe. It's the same as Every watch tells the time, the different watches make you feel in a different way. Different grinders really do feel different. I don't know if that's an easy thing to explain or understand, but that's just the way I see things. So the coffee. We ran 20 grams of coffee with no RDT in 25 seconds with 0.1 of a gram retention. So from a coffee perspective, retention perspective, it really is on par with other grinders. Now, this grinder doesn't have a bellows. So effectively, the way to push through all the grinds is by turning it on and off a few times once most of that coffee is ground out. Effectively, by starting the motor and having that paddle that goes around, you really are gonna get all that coffee out. So the coffee was as I expected. Delicious, nice, tasty, and well balanced. So I guess in that respect, not very different to the other grinders it's competing with. The real point of difference comes from its build and design and the fact that it's got a battery, making this grinder truly portable and seamless on the counter. So who is this grinder for? I really see this grinder for beautiful home setups, espresso or filter for those that love beautiful design and really well-built products, refined products. And for on a commercial sense, coffee roasters that want to visit cafes and have a portable grinder to showcase their product. The competitors to me will be the Time More Sculptor 064S. That grinder is unbelievable value and does really well when it comes to espresso and filter. And from a higher price point, I see it being as an optional P64. This grinder sits at just over half the price of the P64 and a beautiful design with quite a unique features. So I feel like it really does sit in a sweet spot between the Time More and the P64. My question to you though is, how important is build and design, apart from just the coffee quality? If you had a grinder that was awesome at producing coffee, did amazing results, but was a flimsy build at a lower price, would you be happy? Or do you really value unique, beautiful design, really well put together products? Let me know in the comments below, value or design? And like always, if this video has brought you value, let me know by hitting the thumbs up and subscribing. Thank you and see you in the next video.